In 1971, the city of Pontiac experienced the forced integration of schools. This was the first time a northern city was forced to integrate schools after the Civil Rights Movement. 52 years later, and not many people know about this event, and it's not taught about in schools. I don't think everybody understands the historic value of the city of Pontiac being court ordered to desegregate. We'll have, I have young friends that have no clue what we went through to ensure that everybody had a quality education. It was just a wonderful thing that we got an opportunity to be ourselves, um, to help other kids, especially the elementary kids. I can't, we were traumatized with some things and kind of stressed, but I can't even imagine the kids that were in elementary school seeing the buses um, with people trying to tie themselves to wheels, having the National Guard out in front of your school, having parents with signage, um, being called names. It just, when we started that, that's all I could think about. But one person is trying to make a difference and teach that history to everyone she can. Helen Jane Peters hosts Sylvan Stories and teaches the history of Sylvan Lake and the greater metro Detroit area at the Sylvan Lake Community Center. Well, I think everyone should know the background of how we came to be. It's, it's very interesting to me. Um, and, and most people who come to the programs really enjoy them. They ask questions and they want to know. This Sylvan's stories is different from others because she was able to bring the people that lived through the integration of Pontiac schools and they were able to share their experiences to people. So being bused from here to Jefferson was obviously a huge chain, uh, change and that's really where a lot of the controversy, so where you saw all the buses being bombed and the chain, you know, chained to the buses and huge protests and everything. A lot of it was really centered over at Jefferson. So the first day I walked in um, to school and there were protesters everywhere. There was media everywhere. There was National Guard. It was a um, huge thing. And uh, I walked in and um, there was media just swarming the school. And uh, a reporter came up to me and uh, another, uh, a black girl, and asked if they could take a picture. And like normal 12-year-old kids who just react, we said, sure. And we put our arms around each other, did little peace signs. And if it were this day and age, the viral mechanism of what would have happened would have been overwhelming. Nobody, it was just something about Cheryl. Uh, something about her that we just connected. connected right away. And then when we took the picture, they wanted, you know, they interviewed us and we were in the, in the newspaper. I think it was called the Pontiac Press back then. And um, me and Cheryl became so good. I ended up meeting her parents, going over to her parents' house, spending the, you know, the night, and we was just, it was, it was just, it was amazing. All the people from the panel that presented knew each other back when they were in junior high together in Pontiac, and some of them have not seen each other in decades, but the bonds that they made with them and the panel's family members were still there all the way back in junior high and as alive. For more information on the history of Sylvan Lake, contact our friends at the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society or Sylvan Lake historian Helen Jane Peters. For The Splash Live, I'm Anthony Juba.